I place my life into your hands. 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 I place my life into Good morning. Happy Mother's Day and welcome to worship. We are very glad you have joined us here at First Congregational Church in Melrose, United Church of Christ. Please join me in our call to worship. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We come in our joy and in our pain. In times of elation, God celebrates with us. In times of hardship, God weeps with us and offers us divine healing and strength. In this time of worship, we remember that even though we are separated, we are one in Christ. We are united as those who bring our whole selves to the journey, our doubts, and our fears, our gratitude, and our despair, our brokenness, and our wholeness. We are seekers upon a journey. God welcomes us and joins us on the way.
Please join me in prayer. O holy God, draw near to us during this time of worship. O holy God, on this Mother's Day Sunday, we ask that you draw near to our hearts that are filled with gratitude for the mothers in our lives. Remind us also, O God, that Mother's Day has its origins in the quest for a lasting peace following the Civil War. That it was a call to women and all people everywhere to put God first in their lives and work for the abolition of violence. As we celebrate and give thanks, let us feel that call as well. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ be my leader by night as by day. Save through the darkness for he is the Mother's Day Sunday, I invite you to join me in our Mother's Day litany. Mothers come in many different forms. Today we celebrate them all. Mothering God, we draw on the image of you as one who nurtures, who gathers, who protects. We pray for those women who have nurtured us as mothers and who are no longer with us and whom we miss dearly. We reflect upon those women who have influenced our own lives in so many ways, and we give thanks. We pray for the women around the world who are working long days and nights to raise their children right now. We pray for the mothers around the world. We pray for mothers who have fled violence and difficult situations, including refugees, and who have been separated from their children or experienced the hardship of a child's severe illness. We pray for mothers living in uncertainty and facing the unknown. We pray for those mothers who have lost a child to death and must carry on. We pray for strength and courage for the mothers who have faced grief and loss. We pray for women whose children have grown and whom they now seldom see. We pray for mothers who are at a distance from their children. We pray for all women who are expecting. Thanks be to God for the soon-to-be mothers. We pray for all women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but chose instead to mother everyone else. Thank you, God, for the mothers in spirit. We pray for those troubled by the prospect of motherhood, perhaps too soon in life, or with too few resources to care for a child. Mothering God, we offer these prayers to you this day. Hear the prayers of our own hearts. Amen.
Listen for the word of God found in the book of Peter. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May we take this message into our hearts and bring it forth into our lives. Amen.
spending some time with the children here again this morning on Sunday. Uh, it's great to see you. I, well, actually, I can't see you, but you can see me, which I guess is, is half the battle. But uh, we're still in uh, stay-at-home mode here, and you may have a lot of people in your house. I know some people have quite a few people living, li living with them right now, and they're there all the time, which uh, can be a lot. So I have a list of, of people that I wonder if you have living in your house. I'm going to run through a list of of, of kinds of people and see if you have any of these people living with you. Now, you may not know what these people do exactly as I say them, but I'm going to come back to them and explain what each one is, okay? So see if you have any of these living with you. A dietitian, a transportation director, a fashion coordinator, a landscaper, an accounts manager, a pediatric physician, a domestic engineer, an interior designer, an historian, an arbitrator, or a personal coach. Now, going back to what these mean, because you may not know what they are. A dietitian is somebody who decides what's best to eat and makes sure you don't eat too much of it. A uh, transportation director, that's somebody who arranges uh, rides for people to get where they need to go. A fashion coordinator makes sure that um, your clothes look right, right? That you aren't like wearing your underwear on the outside of your pants, that kind of thing. A landscaper, that's somebody who mows the lawn, who, who uh, plants flowers and adds decorations to the outside of your house to make it look cool, right? Accounts manager, that's somebody who pays the bills. Pays the bills for food, pays the bills for all the activities that you take part in. Uh, a pediatric physician, that's a kid doctor, right? If you're hurt, that's the person you go to. Uh, a domestic engineer is somebody who makes sure everything runs smoothly. An interior designer is somebody who makes sure the inside of your house looks cool. An historian is somebody who knows history, especially your family history. An arbitrator is uh, somebody who breaks up fights. Somebody who helps make sure everybody gets along. And a personal coach is somebody who helps you be the best person you can possibly be. So I wonder if you have any of those people living with you in your home. Well, in fact, I can sum up all of those people in one short three-letter word. M-O-M. -M. Mom! Mom is all of those things. Mom is all of those things. Mom is a dietitian, right? She makes sure that you eat the right stuff and, and not too much of it. She's transportation director. She makes sure you get where you need to go. Fashion quarter, make sure, coordinator makes sure you, you look okay with the clothes you're wearing, right? And a pediatric physician, if you're hurt, you go to mom, right? And historian, if you ever ask, you know, what was it like when I was born? Mom's gonna know, because mom was there, right? personal coach. Mom's the one who's going to make sure you're the best possible person that you can be. Mom, it's Mother's Day today, so we want to say thank you to our moms, do something special for our moms, uh, but more than that, I hope you take a moment and just think about all the different things that your mom 
does for you. Because it's easy to just say, yeah, happy Mother's Day. But think about it. Think of all the things that mom does for you each and every day. So I hope you do say happy Mother's Day to your mom. I hope you do do something special for her today. And I hope you wrap it all together with a great big hug. And if you have time, after worship today, uh, you can stop by the church uh, out here on the, uh, outside of our church on Foster Street where the pergola is. You can come by and we're going to have some carnations there uh, for moms. And there's also going to be a basket of bubbles there for the kids too. So if you want us to swing by the church and hop out of the car and grab that, uh, you're more than welcome to. As a way of, for our church to say uh, Happy Mother's Day too. So again, Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there uh, today. Uh, our church really appreciates all that you do for your families and all that you do for our church. So great to connect with you uh, this week and uh, we'll catch up again next week. Well, when we gather in person here for worship at First Congregational Church, we have an announcement time, and we do have announcements. Uh, at the end of uh, this worship service, uh, there's a rolling list of the people who helped share worship uh, with you this morning. And uh, after that list, keep watching, because there will then follow the announcements from, from our church uh, for this week. So look for those there. And as I mentioned with uh, the children in the children's sermon uh, this morning, if you want to stop by uh, the church after, uh, after the conclusion of the worship service this morning at 10 o'clock, uh, you can come by on Foster Street to the pergola uh, and uh, pick up a, a carnation for mom today, and bubbles are there for the kids as well as a way of saying Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there. I also want to say that when we're together in worship uh, in person here, we also have a time for uh, the offering. Uh, well, we can't pass the plate, of course, uh, these days. I do want to thank those who did put in quite a bit of time and effort uh, for, to set up our online giving option, uh, which I hope you'll take advantage of. If you go to our church's website at fccmelrose.org, you're going to find a button right there on the front page of the website that allows you to make a donation. It's a great way to keep your pledge current or to make a special contribution if you're new to our church. And for those offerings that do come in, I'd like to offer this blessing this morning. Oh God, we always look for ways to make our faith in you tangible. Bless those offerings that come into our church, for that is just what they are, tangible acts of faith. May these contributions Strengthen the body of Christ, the church, and keep First Congregational Church an expression of your hope, love, and grace in this world. In Jesus' name we pray.
invite you to hear these words from the Gospel according to John. This is the beginning of the 14th chapter, and Jesus is speaking, and he shares these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. Here ends our scripture lessons for this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? Compassionate Creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there again. I know I said it before, but you can't say it enough, really, on a day like this. So Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Mothers play such an important role in our lives. And you know what moms are really, really good at? Worrying. Worrying. Moms worry a lot. They worry about their kids. They worry about how to best provide for them and raise them when they're little. And when their kids grow up and be adults, the worry doesn't stop. The worry doesn't come to an end. In fact, it ramps up all the more because you have no more control anymore in how they live their lives and what happens to them in their lives as adults. So maybe it's almost in honor of Mother's Day that we have this lectionary text from Jesus where he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. This is right in line with what Jesus says over and over again throughout the New Testament. Do not be afraid. Let me expand this beyond moms to include us all because worry is no respecter of gender. It's no respecter of one's role in life. A troubled heart is really a universal condition. And that's true especially today in light of this pandemic. It's not like we didn't have stuff to worry about beforehand. Now we got that same stuff that we're still worrying about and more stuff stacked on top of that stuff to worry about. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it? That's an important question because a troubled heart is so debilitating. Part of our problem, I think, is that we have come to accept worry as a normal state of being. I'm not sure we know how to function without it. If there's ever a time when we feel free from worry, that worries us. We have troubled hearts. We are anxious about the coronavirus. We're anxious about our kids. We're anxious about the future. We're anxious that we don't have enough or that we aren't enough in who we are. And yet Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Well, wouldn't that be nice to have an untroubled heart? You know, I'm throwing a lot of words out there right now that kind of mean the same thing. Worry, anxiety, a troubled heart. But you know the common denominator in all of that? Fear. Fear triggers it all. We fear for our security. We fear for our health. We fear that we don't measure up to expectations, others or our own. We fear that we are incomplete somehow. Now, I'm not saying that some of us don't have legitimate problems, including legitimate fears about our health, about our family, about our future, but it gets out of hand. And we know it gets out of hand. And we want to fix it, but we don't know how. Wouldn't it be great if it was simple? Wouldn't it be great if the solution to lying in bed at night worrying was just to get a different kind of bed? But it doesn't work like that. 
So from a faith perspective, let me offer this. It's simple, maybe it's obvious, but we don't often do it. And that's this. Invite God in. Invite God in. Ask for God's help. Ask God to help lift the burden from your shoulders, from your heart. Because when you invite God in, then you gain perspective on your problems. When you offer to God your troubled heart, God holds it gently in God's healing hands. And if you listen for God, if you listen for God, I guarantee that you will hear a list of blessings in your life that is far longer than your list of worries. In worship and in prayer, we can take a breath. We can take a breath and really ask ourselves if our problems deserve so much of our time and attention given the many blessings that do surround us each day. Perspective is important. And God offers us that as a gift when we invite God in. The other gift that's waiting for you when you invite God in is patience. Patience. You know, if you look back, a lot of the time, the things that we worry about resolve themselves on their own, whether we act on them or not. Worry doesn't change the outcome of things. Worry doesn't change the outcome of things. Worry itself doesn't rectify anything. It just robs us of our joy. But sometimes, if we're patient, things take care of themselves. So here's something to try that might, might prove my point this morning. There was a man who couldn't push worries out of his mind completely. So he decided to limit his worrying to Wednesdays. Right? There's a thought. Worry, worry just on Wednesdays. He even made himself a special Wednesday worry box that he kept on his desk. And when worries came up and they got the better of him, he wrote them down on a piece of paper, put them in the worry box for Wednesdays. And every Wednesday, you can guess what happened. Every Wednesday, he'd open the box. And when he'd open the box, he'd pull out these, these worries that he had written down through the week. And he discovered that only about a third of the worries he'd written down were still worth worrying about. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Give it a try. Inviting God in allows you access to the gifts from God of, of perspective and patience. The last thing I would add is that when you invite God into your worries, when you invite God into your troubled heart, you'll also find the gift of renewed faith. This is so important to combating that fear that's at the root of it all. Because in the end, in the end, we're fearful that we aren't doing this life right. We're fearful that when it's all over, God's going to say to us, really? Really? That's what you did with yourself? Seriously? But when we have a, 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 an infusion of renewed faith in our lives, we remember that God doesn't operate like that. God doesn't operate that way. God isn't about judging. God is about loving. And you know what? When you get to the other side and you sit down next to God and review your life, God's going to say, that was quite a ride, wasn't it? Look at those highs. Look at those lows. I know all about them because I was right there with you through it all, and you did great. I'm so proud of you. If we can hear that message now, ahead of time, it can help us jettison worry and live a more fulfilling life in the here and in the now. So, if you have a troubled heart, and we all do, invite God in. Because when you do, God has some gifts waiting for you. Perspective, patience, and renewed faith. Jesus put it plainly. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. 
And let us join our hearts in a spirit of prayer. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the women in our lives on this Mother's Day Sunday. Those who are our mothers and grandmothers, as well as those women who may have played those roles in our lives when our actual mothers were unable to do so. We thank them and ask you to bless them on this special day. O oh God, as we continue in this time of separation, we ask your Holy Spirit to keep us connected and aware of your love that binds us all together. Be with those who are in the trenches of this pandemic right now. Ease their troubled hearts with perspective, patience, and renewed faith. And may we think of this empty sanctuary like the empty tomb of Jesus. He was not in that tomb, and we are not here because we are out with him in the world, living his resurrection life. It is in his name that we pray. And now I invite you to go forth in the peace and the love of God. Go forth knowing that God is our mother who nurtures, protects, and defends. As we show gratitude to our mothers today through acts of kindness, may we also show God our gratitude through acts of love and justice in this hurting world. Go forth with purpose. Go forth in confidence. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Amen.